So this is our first virtual event of 2023. And we're also launching our first ever moisturizer that we are so excited about. Before my fab panelists join us, which I know you're so excited to meet and hear from because they have so much to share, um, I didn't want to keep you guys from the product knowing that everyone's super eager to know when they can get their hands on it, what's in it, what it does. It's finally here. You'll actually, actually, you'll actually see a shop link just below to get your hands on the delicious cloud cream. This is our nourishing ceramide moisturizer. So I'm gonna give you a very top line of the product for those of you who've been kept in the dark and might not have seen it or tried it. So much has gone into this. Um, I have had an obsession with the ingredient ceramide for a long time. I believe that lots of us probably overdid the active over, actives over the last few years. So our skin barrier, it might be a little bit at harm. So I think ceramides is an amazing ingredient. I've been obsessed with getting it into a product. This was actually ready pre-Hydroglow, um, but we launched Hydroglow first. So this goes in tandem with Hydroglow. I know that's gonna be a, a question that we get asked loads. This is your moisturizer, if you can imagine, like seals it all on top. So you put on your Hydroglow first, just as a quick point of reference before I get into the panelists. Hydroglow is looser, it's a finer consistency. And then you have ceramide cloud cream moisturizer, which is thicker, but it's not too thick. And that was so important. So oily skins, I hear you before I can even see you. This is not gonna be super heavyweight. Yes, you might just apply it at night. You might not need it every single day, but it's a great repairing for nighttime and it's not gonna be too heavy or thick. If you're dry or sensitized skin, rosacea, eczema, any of those conditions, this is gonna be a dream for you if you're paying your skin routine back. And if you're normal, well then you're just a lucky person in the world and you can just wear anything you want. Um, other kind of facts about it, we didn't want to just take our opinion for it. So we went ahead and we did blind panel tests. We had the most amazing feedback where we basically send an unbranded pot. You fear for your life because they don't know who you are, what you do or what people like about you. And they literally test the formula for what it is. It's been dermatologically tested. That word always gets me. It's been clinically tested and it's been tested by thousands of our lovely community who gave it the seal of approval. So let's just say we've road tested it and we're pretty happy with it and we're thrilled. Um, it's vegan and cruelty free. That goes out saying the whole range is. And my last very important note, and I keep saying and, 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 but this actually is my last note. And then I promise I'll get into the questions. For the next 24 hours to celebrate the pre-access of it, so you can shop Cloud Cream below. It's refillable, 50 mil, you can shop full size, shop bundles and you can have it personalized for 24 hours for free. Because we thought, you know what, this is gonna be something that stays on your shelfie for life. So you wanna have it looking pretty. So I have my name, Amy, there, and you can see a close up on the page. I hope you're all excited. I can't see your comments, but usually people get all frantic at this stage going, ah, but you did see it first, so you know that it's there. But anyway, without further ado, that is a very top line on our Cloud Cream Moisturizer. I'll go into more detail over the coming days. But now we're gonna meet our fabulous panelists. I am so thrilled to be joined by three absolute experts and creatives in their field. Professor Nikki Ralph, qualified pharmacist Jess Redden, and beauty expert and journalist Trina McCarthy. Qualified guinea pig. <laughs> <laughs> also known as Party McCarthy. So you're going to bring the entertainment. Um, so obviously, if you have questions, keep them coming through. Um, the team are on hand to, to feed through anything that we don't get to. But let's start, right? I find Sculpted is six years old, right? We've all entered our industry at various different stages. We've seen probably a lot of change because let's be honest, the cosmetics and beauty industry is probably the most fast paced industry in the entire world. I'd love to know what you guys see as the main changes. But before we answer that, Trina's getting ready. <laughs> I'd love to what go around. You have to be ready. <laughs> Before we go into that first question, which we'll get to, um, if we start by giving us a short history on how you got into the industry first, personally. So I'll start with yourself, Nikki. What's been your journey to dermatologist? Oh uh, God, uh, it's been really long, but here I am. <laughs> um, well, six years of medical school to get a medical Wow, degree. that's dedication, um, isn't it? Yeah, three years of general medicine and then you subspecialize. So then five years of dermatology to become a consultant dermatologist. And then I've been a consultant since uh, 2014. So how many years is that? I can't add it up. It makes me old anyway. No, uh, it makes you experience. A lot of research along the way, a lot of papers written and um, yeah, I love what I do, which is great. Amazing. 
Wow, that's actually made me tired just listening to all those years, but very um, impressed by the effort. And yourself, Jess? Um, similar to Nikki, a long time in college. Yeah, um, I feel like any time I've watched your stories the last few years, you've been studying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think now people are like, so what are you going to do next? I'm like, no, I'm done. Yeah. I'm really done this time. And um, so I did psychology first in okay. UCD. That was three years, and I loved that. And then I, I was working in St. Pat's, and it was, I really enjoyed it. But I was also working in pharmacy at the same time. Okay. And I just loved, like, the pharmacist to me was my biggest role model. She seemed to just you know, the advice that she gave to people, I was like, okay, that's what I want to do. And um, so I applied and that was another five years. And then I qualified last year. Because you want to be really sure that's what you want to yeah. do. Yeah. That's amazing though. Yeah. And so cool to come out the other end in your field, practicing. And now you're the role model to other people, I'm sure here. Well, it's pharmacy. great. You learn so much in the course. It's not just, um, you know, skin conditions, what you're doing, kind of everything. It's a yeah. holistic approach to health, with, which is great. Amazing. Yeah. And last but not least, oh Bobby dear Freeman. God, unlike these two, I did not spend 300 <laughs> years in university. I was 16 when I did my leaving cert, and I had well, no idea baby. what I wanted to do. I know I either wanted to do communications, but actually, it was uh, an American gentleman called Rob Lowe that got me started off on my career. Um, he's an American actor, and um, I was in love with him. And so I, I wanted, I noticed in my smash hits, I used to read smash hits every week. And it always said that he was always going out with makeup artists. And I was like, that's what I'll do. That's how I'll get my hands in. So I decided I was going to study uh, makeup. But you couldn't do it in Ireland at the time. The only place to do it was Brom and Conroy. It's not far from here. So I went to college here. Okay. And I was the worst beauty therapist that ever landed right. into Brom. Oh, my God. Goodness, I was dreadful. You've no was idea. Was it patient or still? Or? Just like we used to use a phoretic machine, which is kind of like a slender tone, and you're only supposed to put it up between one and two. I would oh, have it at see. 10. <laughs> Peel off the ceiling. Whoever. Nobody ever wanted to be, you know, we still get to work on each other. But I was very good at um, the theory. Yeah. And so to get your Sedesco and your SIPTAC, you had to do six months um, uh, work experience. And so long story short, I do my work experience and honestly, the only jobs that poor woman gave me was cleaning down the sunbed. Do you remember sunbeds? Yeah, unfortunately. Spray down the yeah. And answer the phone. And I wrote a little piece about aromatherapy that she was doing. It went into the local newspaper. I was nice. like, actually, I'm really good at this. And long story short, got into um, writing and journalism, even though I'm a farm's daughter from Skull and West Cork, I didn't know anyone who did anything like that. And so I, I have know. been writing for the Sunday Independent now for over 20 years. Oh, my goodness. And I love that it. That is it's, amazing. Yeah. But also, so, like, to be that interesting for 20 years, I well, would struggle. It, the beauty industry is so interesting. Yeah. It's yeah, also it's very confusing. Yeah. Like, yeah. the more you yeah. know, the less you know. Like, Which leads us very nicely into that initial question. But just before I do that, um, be sure to tag pics of whatever home setting you're in if you're having a glass of wine, bubbles, Ooh, cup of yes. tea in your robe. We'll be giving a cloud cream for you and a friend <gasps> to the best tag. FYI social team, <laughs> I'll just put that in there. <laughs> um, okay, so back to that first question. So we've all touched on, it's been a very changing industry, we've all come in at different times. What are the main things, like for me, for example, I feel that customers are far more aware now, which is amazing. Like they have access to information, you know, sometimes that access isn't always super because it may not always be exact, but I think that's one of the biggest changes that I've seen from a formative point of view and being, you know, someone who goes to the lab and actually creates a product, really having to know absolutely everything about it because they will challenge you. So over to you guys. What do you think, Nikki? Has changed over time. Yeah. Um, well, I think obviously I look after patients every day, and I think they're really well informed. Yeah. Um, it's not just put on a moisturizer; it's they know the last detail of ingredients within the mo yeah. moisturizer or, or whatever cream. Um, but yeah, they come in with plenty of information, and then obviously when they're coming to me, it's because they're suffering with something. Mm. So it's just balancing that right ingredient with their actual yes. skin condition. And do you find like over the last few years that there's a certain skin condition that's really excelled, or has it been kind of the similar culprit? the whole time no I mean there's obviously common things being common so our top three would be kind of acne eczema psoriasis and then unfortunately skin cancer but certainly okay. since COVID and uh, with all the masks first of all 2020 was mask knee or mask induced acne yeah. and then that seems to have kind of tapered off because thankfully masks are not for everyone yeah. anymore I still wear it for 12 hours a day and yeah. um, but anyone who's still wearing it may be suffering we saw a lot more rosacea flare okay. uh, and unfortunately due to masks yeah exactly wow. so um, rosacea is the curse of the Celts we call it 
it affects 10% of Irish adults. Wow. So you could have a perfect teenage skin, never had a spot, and then all of a sudden you feel like you have acne in your 30s and 40s, mm. but it's not always true acne. Okay. Um, so a lot of facial flushing, facial redness. Um, so, that's, so we've seen a lot of that flaring. And can that just like, one day you wake up, boom, you've got rosacea? Yeah. Wow, yeah. okay. Yeah. Which is really hard because, you know, as a teenager, you kind of accept that everyone has a certain level of spots. Yes. Yeah. And then you, you're not expecting it at 30 or 40, and then all of a sudden, yeah. you know... You, you grow know. up and think, great, I'm yeah. past that I mean, think it's, you know, not that men can't wear makeup, but for the most part, they don't. I think it's harder for men yeah. because we could all go and slap on some concealer and some makeup and hide the redness, and they can't. And the zoom effect when you're looking back on yourself for the last two years and yeah. seeing the redness um, has been really hard on some men. So for anyone who might be at home who thinks, you know, because the other thing about Irish skins is everyone has a classic high colouring that sometimes yeah. isn't actually rosacea. Mm -hmm. So what do they look out for if potentially they have it but they actually haven't gone and gotten a proper diagnosis or are treating it properly? So there's there's five subtypes of rosacea, but the two commonest would be the what we call erythematous lingiotatic, which is the red gorgeous capillaries. Say that again three yeah. times. Yeah. Can call it, can call it ET rosacea for short. But it's the small broken capillaries around your nose, okay. across your cheeks, sometimes the chin or centre forehead, and easy flushing. So certain triggers like hot food or mm. hot tea, coffee, glass of red wine can cause you to flush. Okay. So that's one subtype. And then the other one is the inflammatory subtype. So it's called papula pustular. So tiny little white heads or yellow heads. Okay. Again, it's mainly a central problem. So across your nose and cheeks. But again, if you have really bad rosacea, it can affect the whole face. And they tend to be very sensitive to products. They feel that mm. products that they used to use suddenly feel like it's making it worse, very irritated. Because it, again, it's skin barrier dysfunction. So the ceramides, the hyaluronic acid, the niacinamide, fab for rosacea. Tick, tick, tick. Yeah. <laughs> thrilled um, that is so interesting and so super helpful to anyone who at home you know might fall into that 10% yeah. and doesn't realize they do over to you Jess so obviously you have an Instagram presence like mm -hmm. the rest of us so it's a great way for people to ask questions to feel like they can approach you I'm sure half them feel like they know you when they see you on the street or walk into the pharmacy but then you also have the flip side where a lot of people go to their pharmacist before they go to their J GP or otherwise. Yeah. I think that's yeah. changed a lot in recent years, okay. especially with COVID. Yeah. Um, you know, I see a lot of mothers coming in with their children mm. before, you know, they automatically just go to the doctor, whereas now they kind of want to seek their pharmacist's advice. Okay. Um, and I think in relation to skincare, women are more empowered to kind of take action now. Like I feel like myself 10 years ago, I would have used whatever was in the press. Yeah. Whereas now I'm like, does it have this or does yeah, it have yeah, yeah. You know, and people want to know, they want that information. Um, so I think a pharmacy is a great first port of call if it's, you know, you advise that you're yeah, yeah. looking And for. do you feel like people kind of over your time in a pharmacy are creating like bigger routines or pairing things back or being more particular about ingredients? Like you said, you would be, you know, when you're looking at does it have this and this? I think what's really nice to see is that there isn't just one blanket. Okay, this is going to work for you. Like they're telling you exactly what their symptoms are okay. specific to them and they're looking for what's going to help with that as yeah. opposed to... Well, this worked for my friend, so I want that. Mm. You know, and it's important to tailor your skincare towards your skin type. Yeah. On the flip side of that, when it comes to makeup, like I used to, when I worked with Mac, like Jesus, 14 years ago. No, that's a lie. About 10 years ago at this stage, a long time ago. Anyway, Net NC30 used to be a really yes. popular. We've all probably. I still it. use it. Yeah. I still use it. It's a great tan thing. shade. Yeah. But some would come in and they would be ghostly porcelain. So beautiful, but so porcelain. Hi, yeah, I'm going to get NC30 because my cousin uses it. And I'd be like, is it for you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's fine. I go, oh, no, 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 we can't. I might have been responsible for that. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're dependent. the culprit of that. And that was your only point of, uh, in, of getting information with free <laughs> social media. Yeah, so. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and over to you, Sotrina. So obviously you're coming at it from the perspective of having to trial and test products for years. Professional guinea pig, that's yes. what I do. Um, Injectables, ingestibles, <laughs> treatments, <laughs> lotions and potions are my devotions. I you belong to the Church so of Cosmetology. Mm -hmm. Actually, there's something I think that's changed a lot. I think people are so serious about skincare now. Really? Like, yeah. I know it, it is, like, I think beauty is wellness. You know, it's yeah. not, you know, when I was younger, if somebody was spending loads of time doing their makeup or skincare, oh, she's completely up herself. You know, yeah. she loves herself, which in our, it, it's the only place, isn't it, Ireland, that, you know, she loves herself, that's seen as being an insult. I mean, yeah. else would be like, you know, but, um, and I think it was thought of as being a bit frivolous, but I think beauty is actually wellness. It's yeah, self-care, totally. it's looking after yourself. Yeah. But I do enjoy the fun aspects of it as well. Like, yes. I, I love a gizmo, a gadget. I love when, somebody sends me like a glitter mask. Like, why would you put a mask 
<laughs> on your face with glitter in it. Nikki's probably like, never do something like that. And I've seen it all. I've literally seen like, I'm like, what is coming down the line? Like left lobe, you know, cream, inside the nose cream. Like I'm like, what is left, you know? Yeah. So I enjoy all the, um, the kind of trends as well. But a big one I've noticed um, is the formula is back. Okay. So there was all these single dose um, ingredient products. They were mm -hmm. very, very popular, I feel, yeah. for the last couple of years. And, you know, I think a formula is better myself personally because I'm not a dermatologist or a pharmacist, you know. I don't have a degree in biochemistry. I'm not, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I like people to put the proper dosages into a cream yeah. Yeah. that yeah. will work with each other in a good delivery system. And I feel like we've got away from, like, the 17 steps in skincare as well because we yes. don't have the time for it. Mm. I think we all went a bit bananas scrolling through TikTok, buying all these things. It was <laughs> yeah. like, see it, Acne want it, buy it. And you'd yeah. buy it like, what even is this? And then you'd turn the face off yourself Kula, you didn't know. Back a shawala, you know, like what, <laughs> CBD was in everything. Like what is happening no, here? True. And so I think everyone, we've got busier now again. Yeah. And so you're, everyone's paring back their skincare. So it's perfect timing, yeah. honey, for you to have a moisturizer. But, and it's funny back. you mention that, because so firstly, for those at home, I'd love to know, are you pairing your routines back? Are you reducing the level of products you use? Or are you just adding to that shelf the whole time? Because I think it very much fits what's happened with makeup and skincare. Mm -hmm. You know, this whole trend of skin minimalism. So, you know, yes, it's come from a post-COVID world, but like that, people have either burned their barrier too much by all that they've used, or we just don't have the time anymore. We want to pair it back. I think for us as a predominantly cosmetic brand entering that world, we were very conscious that, yes, skincare was asked for because we're very associated with our South Korean factory. Mm -hmm. Ceramides, by the way, is a ceramide MP, so the highest class, just FYI. Do people know um, what ceramides are, actually, I wonder? That's a very good yeah. question, Trina. Um, I'm going to throw that over to the experts <laughs> there. Because uh, my version would yeah. be like, well, there are these lipids that are like, <laughs> they stop, they... Yeah, well, they're, they're kind of more slow release. Yeah. So they're basically recreating that skin barrier over that 24 hour period. Yeah. Um, and they're suitable for everyone, which is the nice thing. No matter if you have a skin condition or you have normal skin, we all have a touch of slightly drier, slightly oilier. Mm -hmm. so and would I be correct in saying that people who have eczema or clinically dry skin yeah. actually don't have very many ceramides in yeah, their, or lower levels. Less, in yeah, their yeah, skin, yeah. yeah. So it's perfect for everyone. So, and yeah. there will be body lotions that have it in it and, mm. and obviously for face creams as well. Yeah, will so. you be bringing out a body yeah. lotion for Ooh. Who knows, you heard it here first, <laughs> little scoop. Um, but I think that for everyone, without saying like a cliche and trying to be everything for everyone is really important to us. Like we didn't want to have any fuss with our skincare offering. So Hydroglow is a hydrating serum that every single person on the planet can put in their face, no bother. Mm. Same with them um, with cloud cream. So yes, if you're an oilier skin, you may not want a richer consistency every single morning and evening, but it's there for you in your routine if you need it. And I think taking that hassle out of like, oh, what do I use now? Where does it go? Who's it yeah. for? Is something that we have to do because that's what we're synonymous with. But that's what people want. I'm really <laughs> yeah. finding that like, you know, we've kind of got jaded and just there's been too much confusing information. And like yeah. I said, we're, I'm not a biochemist. I don't. I live in a small house as well. I always say this, that if we get a new tea towel, another one has to leave. You know? <laughs> yeah. I want, you know, a nice curated, I feel yes. like we're going back to very curated skincare. Yeah. And like the OG um, kind of uh, ingredients are coming back again. Mm. So ceramides. Yeah. Um, actually, one thing I've seen that's coming in is, <laughs> you're going to laugh at this. <laughs> Probiotic. Oh, colostrum. Oh, colostrum, yeah. Now, if you don't so know what that. colostrum is, sorry for the gentlemen that are, so it, it's becoming very popular. Mm. I've noticed it's in a uh, beauty. Is that a good it's healer? Yeah. It's a. Do you want to say that? Well, I mean, it's all to do with what um, colostrum is. Yeah, and the word baby's milk and. Yeah, then, that's what I would have seen it in. Yeah, and then again, there's placenta cream as well, if anyone's yeah. familiar with Biologique Research. So, yes, taking it from. Everything from within. Okay, wow. Um, yeah. Why did I have to go throwing that in there? Well, it's yeah. funny because my question <laughs> was actually going to be on their face, so what, yes. um, what ingredients do you guys love or what ingredient on the horizon are you excited about? For me personally, in yeah. my skincare? Um, With, in or any just way. generally? Yeah. Um, well, I, I like an ingredient that everyone can use. Okay. Because then... You like to be fair nothing, to the masses. Nothing can go wrong with it. <laughs> um, you know, the last two and a half years, nearly or we three years now nearly, um, we saw the TikTok trend of slugging where everyone was yes. smearing fast. I did try that. Face. Not for acne prone skin. If you have eczema, great. Do not go there yeah. if you've got acne. I'm acne prone, so it was terrible. Yes, that was a, a big flare. Uh, we've seen the 20 steps as you were talking about where someone would take probably two hours to try and put it mm. on and we saw 
lot of what we call acne cosmetica. There's so many layers on your skin. It was like it couldn't breathe and everyone oh, was getting blocked pores and things like that. And then we saw everyone going, I've loads of time now. I'm going to put a 1% retinoid on my face and hopefully it won't peel off, which it did. Mm. Yeah. Um, so you're supposed to step those things up slowly. So okay. we've seen all of that and now it seems to have stopped, thankfully, mm. and everything's kind of calmed down. But am down. I right in saying your skin can only absorb so much? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. When you put so many yeah. different yeah. products, that's when you're getting the yeah. And if you put your layers in the wrong it. way, like, you know, some people wake up in the morning and the first thing they put on is their sunscreen and then they're putting layers of moisture on top of it and you're like, no, it's the wrong way around. So, you know, That's we do need to be skin educated. Skin cycling, yeah. like yeah. all these yeah. different yeah. terms, slugging, skin cycling. But like maybe skin. that's a good question to touch on for those who are at home and maybe we need to bring it back to basics for them. How would you layer your products? In what order, say, if we take a morning routine? So vitamin C for me in the okay. morning for its skin brightening effect and its antioxidant effect against the pollution of the city that we live in. Nice. Um, and I really do feel if I just, I don't know, if I went away for a week and I didn't bring it with me, it's the, uh, maybe it's You'd all up in my it. head, but I noticed the difference mm. that my skin isn't as mm. bright. And then moisturizer. Okay. Uh, often with, obviously, because they've built in niacinamide mm -hmm. and hyaluronic acid. Yeah. And then my sunscreen as my last thing between me and the sun. Always yeah. Think for so last. I think that's important because I think a lot of people can, can be confused as to where a sunscreen should come, but it's generally always your last step yeah either yeah on a no makeup look or else your first step pre makeup at the end and if you really don't want it as in you don't want three layers or five layers just get a sunscreen that has you know your hyaluronic acid in and your niacinamide and everything yeah. and then it's one product. mix them together mm -hmm. yeah. keep it easy that was my vanity motive behind beauty base because I had gone, at the time, I was like 24 and I'd gone for a scan on my face and they told me my SPF was really bad, like sun protection levels. And I was like, I just don't want to be putting on these four or five layers. Mm. So I went to Korea and I was like, pumped a strobe cream, pumped a moisturizer, pumped a sunscreen. And I was like, can you mix all of this in one, please? Mm -hmm. That's what they did. Wow. Can I give you a top tip with using your beauty base? You know, please do. You <laughs> SPF in it. I've just found a way of, you know, so your face is... You've put on your SPF, your base, your foundation. You've been out in the sun. Yeah. And, you know, it only lasts for so long. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, Nikki, you would say Every that. two to three hours yeah. in, in, in the summer months, obviously in an Irish winter, you'd be fine yeah. once a day, but yeah. So if you actually get it and put it on a sponge and actually dab it on, mm -hmm. it's really easy to get the to get back in that again. That Even you over your makeup. Without, yeah, without mm -hmm. disturbing your makeup. You can literally Lovely. put it on with the sponge. Yeah. Nice. Top tip. There you go now. It's like, well, there you go, Jen Zeers. <laughs> that is my tip. Um, Jess, I'm going to go yeah. to you for a second. So on that kind of same note of ingredients, um, uh, naturally being in a pharmacy, you're mm. often people's first go-to, especially recently, which is great. What are the kind of main skin conditions that you are being kind of spoken to about and any kind of great over-the-counter remedies that you recommend as, as good ones? So I suppose the top two would be acne and eczema. Like that's okay. what I would see day to day. Um, with acne, I suppose it depends on how severe it is. Mm. Uh, usually we would say first line, something like benzoyl peroxide. Okay. But with that, it's really important to start low, go slow. It can okay. also stain sheets. Oh, that's aware. really important. Yeah. yeah. You get the phone call saying, like, you never told me my towels. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, why, what kind of colour? Bleaches white. Bleaches. So, a so, lighter colour, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rob was at home washing the pillowcases, silk pillowcases. What's going on? And he was like, why are these all stained? I was like, no <laughs> idea. It's, it's the benzoyl peroxide. Yeah. <laughs> but I put that just, you just spot treat it on each spot but it can be really drying. Mm. And I was actually gonna say about the cloud cream, because mm. I use hyaluronic acid and that will kind of hydrate it for a couple of hours, but that completely got rid of the flaking. Amazing. Because um, your skin is like ceramides. losing yeah. ceramides mm. in yeah. conditions like acne and rosacea. Okay. Um, so benzoyl peroxide first line, and then once a week I would exfoliate. I think people are over exfoliating, mm. and that's leading to an increase in oil production. And you're actually mm. making things worse. Yes. Um, so and in terms of people over exfoliating, because I think that's a big thing. Mm. Do you think it's down to confusion of actually what ingredients are exfoliants? Yes. Because mm. like I find a lot of people like, oh yeah, that's my cleanser, and I'm like, that's a heavy exfoliant in yeah. that. <laughs> Do you know? And they're lashing on four times a day. Yeah, and also thinking, I suppose, that like, okay, well, if I scrub my face yeah. really hard, I'm going to get rid of all these spots. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you actually have to be really gentle. And as we keep saying, pair it back, pair it back. Ceramides would be brilliant. Mm -hmm. Benzoyl peroxide maybe every second night. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, something just really nourishing that's non-comedogenic, so it doesn't clog pores. Yes. Mm -hmm. Trina and I will probably know the St. Ives peachy I scrub. I was just about to say that. Like oh, sand on your face because we were... Yeah. I, no, no, yeah. I, I partook in that as well. Yeah, but it's um, 
please, for anyone listening, do not use like sand on your hand and scrub it onto your face because yeah. you're stimulating the oil glands to make more oil. And then you're, no, I shouldn't laugh. You're I was one the skin of those barrier. People. Well, we all use and then it. I went to oh, boarding school. It was yeah. sold out constantly in the pharmacy yeah. end because we love. And when you think about it, it was like proper kernels from yeah, like uh, salt. So uh, it wasn't yeah. like you know uh, things Something that, that would that dissolve. Would be, yeah, yeah, yeah or, or just it, yeah. like which they don't do any more plastic. But so it would really like scratch your yeah. face. Yeah. We were addicted to it, and then we had the scrubby gloves. We were yeah. scrubbing yeah. ourselves like <laughs> crazy. So do not scrub your face. I would love to hear from those of you who are at home watching. What are your biggest skin fails or memories? Were you a Saint Dives exfoliator? Are you still? Are you someone who uses makeup wipes? If so, please leave the chat. Yeah. <laughs> but we'd love to hear what stories you guys have. Um, like I said below, this is your pre-access to Shop Cloud Cream. You can engrave it complimentary for the next 24 hours only, and that is super strict. Come 6 p.m. tomorrow, it is gone. Links below, and our bundles are live also. I'm gonna check in with the team now and see if there's any questions that we need to understand. Oh, hello on my clipboard. I've got plenty more. Um, okay, I'm gonna go straight in, bang, bang, bang. Trina. Oh, Jesus. This okay. one's for you. <laughs> it's actually a nice one. What do you look for in a moisturiser? Ooh, what do I look for in a moisturiser? Like, I'm very, um, I'm very fickle. It depends <laughs> on, and I go through different stages and I'm a different person every day. It's oh, like, yeah. lovely. Yeah. You know, did I get sleep last night? Was I out the night before? Um, in the summertime, I know a dermatologist and a pharmacist probably would say not to, but I do like an all-in-one. I like the moisturiser to have an SPF because I'm very mm. paired back. Um, and like I said earlier, I like anything that's a formula now. Yes. That, you know, has everything that's working in synergy together and a good delivery system that I trust and I will mm. feel um, that is, you know, you, and I don't like fragranced as well. And I love yeah. that your new yeah. the cloud cream. Um, that was a very fragrance. conscious decision not yeah. to go big on fragrance because particularly for sensitized skins yeah. Yeah. that we know ceramides are really but good. But it actually for. has that really luxurious feel that you think it's going to mm. smell like, yeah. you know, but actually yeah. it's good that it doesn't because it can sometimes yeah. you know, be like, Nasal it's funny. Pollution. I always find smell is like more pollution. Where did I get that word from? Sorry. Never. <laughs> <laughs> I bought it. Um, over to you, Jess. Any advice for sore breakouts whilst pregnant? Do you know what? Something again. We keep talking about pairing back, pairing back. Um, I used to do this myself when I get really bad sore mm. breakouts, and I didn't want to. I was putting so many different acids, and to just kind of help calm it. Uh, live yogurt, because that's got your lactobacillus, mm, okay. oats, which is really soothing, so colloidal oatmeal. And I just put that on my face, and the next morning it would be really soothing. Like, and then you don't have to go out and buy. You know. Okay. Um, that's one tip. Interesting. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm sure everyone at home will be like this mm -hmm. if they're sitting at home pregnant. Um, to yourself, Nikki, any advice on how to clear perioral dermatitis? Perioral dermatitis, yeah. Thank you. Um, so that's the thing we actually saw in the last two and a half, three years again. So it's tiny little spots, mm. almost like little vesicles, like a little clear, clear bubbles. Uh, I can I, can I be around the mouth? It's called perioral, perinasal, or periocular. Okay. Um, so peri or official dermatitis, if it's in all areas, it's really annoying because it's kind of it hangs around for a while. Right. Um, realistically, you do need a prescription often. So it's all okay. kind of prescription cream if it's not too bad, and then it's a six-week course of prescription antibiotics, not for the antibiotic effect for their anti-inflammatory effect on the skin. Okay. So really, if it wasn't that bad, you could op absolutely start with ceramides and things like hyaluronic acid and niacinamide in a cream okay. and really take away any anti-aging. So if you have any retinoid or any acids in your routine, they have to be completely stopped okay. because it can be triggered by a new skincare routine. Um, it can be triggered by change of hormones, mm -hmm. sunscreen, a new product. So you have to strip back all of the stuff that's um, basically damaging the skin barrier. Okay. And would you find a lot, like I know, um, personally speaking, myself, I have visited the lovely Dr. Nikki. Um, I have really suffered my skin for the last year and I feel like you always think when you're a teenager, like we mentioned at the start, that's when you get acne. Mm. And then lo and behold, you're 29 and it's like, boom, loads of acne comes out. Um, so I have started taking Roactane and I was thrilled with the launch of Cloud Cream and kind of testing it in the prototype stage that it was a great um, formula and ingredient for me to use when I was going to be going through this because obviously I knew that I had to cut other areas out. Um, do you find that that is often the course that some people tend to have to go down? 
Yeah, it really depends. I suppose the the unfortunate thing for females is that 20 to 40 percent of, of adult women will still suffer with acne into their 40s versus, wow. you know, less kind of four to, to 20 percent of men. Okay. Um, so it isn't just a teenage problem. Mm. And, you know, when you get this, you'll grow out of it. It doesn't happen. Yeah. But the most important thing is to catch somebody before they start scarring. Okay. Um, so there's nothing worse than seeing someone. And then, of course, you're going to give them a course of treatment. But it's that too late. It's to yeah. catch them before all of that scarring. And yes, we've all the lasers and everything, but nothing is as good as just never having those scars mm. in the in the first place. And do scars come just from those who pick? On no, their no, it's the inflammatory <laughs> process. Okay, so you're okay. Um, but it's the inflammatory process of the acne itself that can uh, lead. To, but yes, you should not pick uh, because mm. if you squeeze a spot, um, it's spilling over its contents, which is the dead skin cells, and the bacteria that have built <laughs> never up. Never have I ever. Like, oh, we've all done it. We've all done it. We've done. Yeah. Yes, cream on face, we've done everything. <laughs> uh, but just don't. And actually, they've had a look at studies where we've all convinced ourselves that the spot goes away more quickly. Yeah. But it actually doesn't heal more quickly. And then you just give yourself a chance of more spots. So do not, and you can leave yourself the little indentation that um, is there forever. And can I ask two myths? I don't know if they're myths or home remedies or if they're just a placebo effect in our minds. Pseudocreme and toothpaste on spots. Thoughts. We've all done it. Yeah. Um, it will dry it out slightly, and of course, it'll have uh, the zinc component. Zinc is naturally anti acne, yeah. so you'll definitely wake up and that big mountainous spot will be calmer the next day. But the problem is, it is oil based, so you'll be blocking your other pores. It's gorgeous. So you'll just get more spots. But we've Love all done it. it, but I don't recommend it. No. Yeah. And fluoride, yeah. I think, as well, and the toothpaste yeah, can be an irritant yeah. to the skin. Yeah, you'll get a peeling kind of spot. Yeah. So no to all ourselves yeah. at home. Yeah. It was we no longer in use. Ireland when I was growing yes. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a spot. Yeah. 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 Um, and a question for myself, do I still use Hydroglow with Cloud Cream? You can absolutely use the two in tandem. Hydroglow is a finer consistency serum. So it's designed to penetrate the skin that bit deeper prior to your moisturizer, which is like the seal on top. So in terms of the order that you would use them, you would always use your serum first. So always go for thinner consistencies before thicker consistencies. But in saying that, I keep using the word thick and rich when it comes to Hydroglow or Cloud Cream. Yes, it is rich richer than Hydroglow, but it's not a very typical super heavy pot moisturizer that some can be. And that was deliberate with oily skins in mind for those who want to bring it into their PM skincare routine or AM and PM, depending on what you're going through, so that it isn't too heavyweight and feeling like it's weighing you down. But yes, you can use it. Just pop your Hydroglow on first. Right, back to my questions. Best tag, we have it free at the end. Um, okay, I'm going to go back to... All of you, actually. How long do you spend on your makeup and skincare routines? Jess, kick us off. <laughs> okay, so very different. Like makeup, I feel like I rush at it. So I'll be 10 minutes before work. But skincare, I could be anywhere from 20 minutes to 45 minutes. Wow. A day? Like, yes. Okay. And what would you yeah. be doing More in time? the evening. <laughs> well, I have to cycle myself What would you be doing? Up. Exactly. <laughs> like, would you like, put a mask on that? Double cleanse. Okay. Yeah, I do a mask every second or third night. But I do an oil-based cleanser first, then remove the makeup. Okay. Then if I'm doing a mask night, yeah, that add, adds on an extra 15 minutes. Okay. And um, then all my different serums, mm -hmm. lotions, potions, eye creams. And then I have these, you know, the ice rollers. Oh, oh cryo sticks. I love that you do I love them. Do I need yeah. them in my life? I love it. Um, I if find you, them really good. Spend time. time to puffiness. <laughs> so my oh, under eyes are yeah, okay. so puffy. Mm -hmm. So it's the only thing for me that helps mm -hmm. with depuffing. Okay. Um, and then yeah, so it, it nice. can take a while. So makeup gets shoved out the door, and skin has this full palace. Yeah. Lovely. Like I love makeup, and I'd love to be better at makeup. You are um, very good at makeup. You I are. just kind of yeah, it's a, it's a quick ten minutes. Nice. What about you, Trina? Again, it depends on if I've been out the night before, if I've woken up late, if, you know, uh, in the morning time. I, I really like a kind of kiss technique, keep it simple. Um, oh, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Really, like, if I've done a, a double cleanse the night before, I'll just use the clothes in the morning and just, you know, wash, mm. or if I'm in the shower, just use, you know, a, a, you know I do, I'm really quick in the morning. Okay. And just put on maybe a moisturizer with an SPF in it. Mm -hmm. um, makeup wise, I love going without makeup, I have to say. I go an awful lot, um, and then I put the Paris filter on on my Instagram. <laughs> You're grand all together. You know, we're filter-free faces here. <laughs> but the joke. Paris one is grand when you don't want it to be. You know. <laughs> um, so I would, makeup-wise, uh, I do a really quick face. I, I'm finding it harder as I get older because everything is moving down into my bra, basically. Oh. Like, my cheeks have completely <laughs> moved. My <laughs> eyebrows are hanging down lower than... <laughs> when they were in, I've left all my Botox wear off. So I find that, yeah, I'm, 
I feel like actually that nobody should write a beauty column about skincare or makeup, well, skincare until they're at least 35 because that is what you need. All like for years, I was like, no, I don't need that now. I'm like, what is in that exactly? Like, you know, because yeah, yeah, yeah. everything changes so much, you know. Yeah. So but the skin um, does go through phases, doesn't it? Yeah. Some more drastic than others. Yeah. And yourself, Nikki? Um, so makeup, I wear a full face of makeup every day. Um, <laughs> seven minutes, exactly. <laughs> Everything time, just have to be out the door from traffic. Five minutes of skincare in the morning and five minutes in the evening, except if I do a once a week face mask, which will be an extra 15 minutes. Love that. I love how different all the yeah. panelists are. It just shows you that you can be like all of the above or none of the above and still hopefully have a nice, simple routine. Um, right, I've got three quick fire and questions before we finish. Um, if I didn't get your question, I'm so sorry, but we will have sound bites on Instagram after potentially and we can answer more questions there. I'll be on for the week because it's launch week, so I'll answer anything that I can. Right, super quick, fire round first comes to mind. Best tip you've ever been given or one that you love to give? Um, everyone wear sunscreen. Nice. I spent two days a week. Talking like a true pro. Yeah, I spent two days a week in theatre, unfortunately, removing skin cancer. That's okay. the biggest part of my job, uh, which, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love operating. It's a great part, but I would just love if mm. everyone incorporated that into their skincare routine. Okay, yeah. very important note. Jess? Um, don't forget from the next yeah, one, yeah. using your serums and everything, because mm -hmm. you can just focus on your face, but all of here as well is really Guilty. Important. We're all both. Uh, me too. Um, me, um, I would say just do a lot more of this. <laughs> Honestly, you're better looking when you smile. <laughs> True. And it's contagious. People will smile back at you. I love and it. And it actually releases all the feel-good chemicals into your brain, like yeah. serotonin and all that good stuff. And so fake it till you feel it. If you're feeling crap, just go around <laughs> like that. And it's so not creepy at all, so it's gorgeous. <laughs> um, in honour of us being in the Sweet and Grafton Street and Cloud Cream launching, I'm afraid I have to be slightly self-indulgent and ask two sculpted questions to finish us off. One being your favourite sculpted product. Oh, satin silk for me. I'm satin in silk there. foundation. I wear it every day. Nice. So good. Trina? I, gosh, I have so many. Um, I am in love with the new mascara. I'm getting everyone to try it. Um, <laughs> and the double ended I was Eyeliner. saying to Owen, who was doing my makeup okay. earlier. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I never liked a cream, you know, no or white. Way. Oh, it makes you look so awake. It, but I used to think it would look kind of old fashioned. When it's or nude, though, not a white, it's lovely. But I never yeah. found the right colour, and your one is perfect. And I use the brown, I have it on today. I have, you have to sell it in the airport because... We're coming. Yeah, because it Sneak is the perfect one, double-ended. Yeah. You can use it in your brows as well. Mm. Absolutely. Love nice. anything that's multi-purpose. And Nikki, we chatted earlier about Beauty Base. Yeah, the glow like that it gives. The feel of it, but also I'm um, new to the makeup and um, Isabel used the combination lip liner. And yeah, lip duo. Yeah, yeah. That'll especially be for, for your seven minute routine. Quick. Yeah. And very lastly, and I just want to say a massive thanks to our fabulous panelists for all of your, you know, really, really good, accessible tips that people can actually bring in at home, which I think is really important. If you were to sum up cloud cream in a sentence from having used it, what are your thoughts? I would say the glue that holds your skin together. Oh, I'm just that's finding lovely. it's really, yeah, it's helping a it's lot. It's binding. Yeah. yeah. That was a good sound bite. <laughs> I feel like it's just like, um, do you know what it sprung to mind? My, I was talking to my friend Melanie Morris about it. She went to the oh, press yeah. launch. Oh, yeah. And she says it's like a hug in a jar. That's what we love. Yeah. Are you on our PR team? That's amazing. No, 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 no. Uh -huh. So, and I was like, <laughs> it so is, because it feels very luxurious and it just, absolutely just i think the comfort is key yeah. you know like being on a cloud like that airy feeling obviously we're playing into the name but actually it being a comfortable soothing moisturizer was key so i love that how can i enjoy it? well it was melanie that said that so yeah. thank you melanie. So, from her. <laughs> and last but not least perfect. well i like that it has a dual purpose so you can use it in the morning and mm. your makeup will sit well because everyone always asks me like you know what what moisturizer yes. i use because i would like to wear makeup <clears throat> um but when your face is all fully cleansed and everything it feels lovely and fresh at night it gives that really nice hydration. It's like your skin just sucks it in nice. and you wake up feeling glowy the next morning. Love that. I think it is an important point to note as well that it is a lovely base for makeup on the days that you like to wear it in the morning. Um, with that being kind of like a richer consistency than hydrogloic like I mentioned, but not super heavy that it won't absorb in. And obviously we love the fuss free products that come after it. So it's a lovely base to try. I cannot believe how fast that went. We have the best tag on social. Thank you so much for those that did tag us. It is at Leanne Maxweeney. Please send us a DM. We'll reach out, if not, because we have your tag. And we'll organise a cloud cream for you and a friend, or else you can just keep both for yourself. 
<laughs> um, we will save this down. Hopefully it will be watch backable. I love that word that we just made up. If you do shop cloud cream this evening and you get it engraved, I hope that you love it. And I can't wait to hear your thoughts for those that try it. Thanks again so much to our panel of experts who have just been fabulous. To the team for all their hard work and have a lovely evening. Woohoo!